Uh, what got you in that? Well, I was really shy when I first started acting, like crazy, crazy shy. So I was just trying to do anything that could get me out of my shell. You know, I tried lots of things, dance and gymnastics, but I never found anything that was really my thing. So, you know, I was obsessed with Disney Channel when I first started. So I was like, well, I want to be on TV. I want to be on Disney Channel. So my mom just signed me up for all like the websites. You know, we took photos and then I got my first audition for Small Time. And, you know, we taped, I got a call back, we flew out to New York and did persons and I got the job, my first ever job, my first audition. And it was really interesting because, you know, I never, I didn't really know how to do it. It was just kind of like a thing, you know, I've, I had like a photographic memory so I could memorize the lines. It was just kind of like it was like meant to be. So I just, you know, I didn't have any practice, but I, as soon as I got on set, it was like everything was like so magical you know, like all the cameras and lights. And it was like, it was just so awesome. Now, being that essentially it was Disney that got you into loving acting, small time is very much opposite of Disney. Um, <laughs> the entire script beforehand, how did that work? And were you okay with it? I I had read some of the script. I mean, I was I was only seven, so I didn't really know what it was. And it was it was over the span of four years that we filmed it. So like after the first two years, I kind of started to realize this is really deep and dark. But you know, I love those kinds of things. You can really show your acting with that kind of pro those kind of projects. So you know. I kind of got even more into it when I started learning more what it was about because, yeah, it was dark, but it gave me a chance to really show, you know, that I can do motion, I can do something dark, I can't, I don't have to just be cookie cutter kids, you know. So explain that for me. How did that work from when you were so young, from seven? How did you sort of control the transition? Um, I mean, you know... At first, I was just kind of, you know, doing, you know, whatever Niav, the director, would say, you know. And then as I, you know, the transition, it was kind of like, at first, I was like, wait a second, you know. Because, of course, like, you know, I knew it was acting, but I was like, this is really deep and dark. And, you know, there's a lot of kids out there like that. So mm -hmm. I just tried to transition. I just kind of thought about you know, what it would be like to be in this situation and really try and put myself there. And, you know, I just, you know, I was always like calm about it. You know, this isn't really happening to me. But, you know, at first when I did read, I was like, you know, that's weird. But, you know, I mean, it is sad. It's a sad story. Absolutely. Emma goes through a lot in it. And I think it is important that people know that there are kids like Emma and they go through this a lot. And for me, it was acting, but for a lot of people, it isn't. So I just kind of pulled into that when I was acting. Which is insane when you're so young for you to be able to pull into that when it is stuff that you might not even know about yet. Mm -hmm. um, but you managed to do it. You pulled it off wonderfully. Um, and it obviously opened quite a few doors for you for your future and I think the fact that it was so deep um, really helped you progress in your career. Oh yeah definitely and you know I have done a lot of deep things and I definitely think it was like a push because at first it was Disney and of course Disney's on my bucket list right. but you know after doing that I was like this is really cool the deep and dark and scary or not perfect kids roles. And now, taking the deepness of that, you're in the flight attendant. I am. It doesn't, it doesn't stray too far away from the deep. <laughs> that, yes, definitely. Um, you play quite a big role in that. You are the lead as a younger version of herself. Mm -hmm. um, what was it like when they came to you and asked you to play Kelly Cuoco? <laughs> I was, I was like, I was jumping up and down. I was like screaming and I was so excited because, you know, when I first even got the audition, I was like, well, first I look identical to her, you know, so I knew already like that was a good, you know, a good step forward. And, you know, 
it had been going, they'd been casting it for a little bit. So looking for kids still. So, you know, I, it was like, you know, it just when I auditioned, when I did the audition, I felt so good about it. And just like after I finished that, I was like proud. And working with Kaylee, Kaylee Cuoco was such a dream and it was so amazing on set. It was like, I'm, I'm just still so excited and shocked that like it's like coming out and it's like, you know, I've been seeing like, like people get to see it. Like I'm seeing like bus stops with like the flight attendant on it. And it's like, it's so cool to be a part of it, you know? And have you watched it? I have, yes. The um, fourth and fifth episode just came out yesterday. So mm -hmm. every Thursday, two episodes come out. So I'm not yeah. going to lie. I've already binged those two episodes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am too. I've watched I've watched all the episodes at least twice now. Just yeah. like... <laughs> so, so being that you were so shy and then you get a role like this, is it safe to say that you've got a... You've got a bit of a confidence booster now. I, I, yeah, I definitely, I will say that I've gotten definitely less shy. And I mean, sometimes I can be a little, but once I like on set, especially, I feel like it gets me out of my show a lot. And I, once I kind of warm up, I feel like I'm just like, I'm like all ready to do my thing and, you know, act. And, and you've pretty much been steadily busy since 2016 now. Uh, yeah, I have. I mean, of course, you know, coronavirus, everything slowed down a bit. But, you know, I think once, I mean, with the flight attendant, we were able to get back to filming safely. And, you know, I'm sure that once it, everything were, is sort of back to normal, mm -hmm. I'm sure that I will hopefully get a little busy again. <laughs> and so for you, I mean, a lot of actors, this is completely out of their realm because they've been in the industries for so long they've been going to set with everything normal mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden they've been hit and have to change everything you haven't been in the industry that long so are you noticing the effects the same as you think other actors are i i definitely would say because i don't it, it's you know less auditions and everything's over zoom now and it's so hard to like it's a lot easier when you get to connect with someone even with just the auditions and it's a lot harder to do it over the skype and i think it's really easy to kind of mess it up through that especially with like with the auditions and the filming is a lot different you know it's like everyone you know all the, the tests the making sure that you like every day when you go to you have to get tested again for corona and then you know you have to wait and make sure that your test is negative and then you have to go film and it's like you know so many different precautions but i mean as long as you're getting it out there you're filming it you're making it and it's going somewhere then i mean it's really you know it's worth it you know yeah you can't complain i guess right yeah. <laughs> so you guys aren't in a bubble i sort of assumed that if you were on a series you'd be in a bubble and it would be okay to just go from home to set home to set but you're actually having to be tested every time mm -hmm, yeah and then you know if say if you didn't work for a week or two then you'd have to go and get tested a few days before you came and then when you went back on set you know the tests and the tests it's like after a while, you're just like, am I immune to it? You know, like, I'm <laughs> yeah. not taking it. am I ever going to get it? You know, oh, but wow. <laughs> yeah. So auditioning to tape, obviously, it's very different than walking into a room of people that are, for lack of a better word, judging you. <laughs> uh, you find it more difficult to do it on tape? Um, I think so, yeah. I mean, with the tape, it's... It is, there is some advantages to it, especially, you know, you really get to work on it and, you know, chip away the different parts because on a real set, you'd get to do it. You'd spend the whole day doing one scene, you know, but with uh, in person, you would only get to do it once. So there's that, but also, you know, in person, you, get in per you get redirected in person too, and they know what they're looking for. With the right. tape, you don't really know what they want. So you just kind of have to play it how you feel it should go. And, but so, you know, in person, they know exactly what they're looking for. They can redirect you if they think you can do it. But, you know, in tape, it's like, am I going too much? Should I be doing it more? You know, there are a lot of questions with that. 
So in the end, you're your own worst critic and it just makes it more difficult. Yes, <laughs> yes, definitely. Well, I think you're doing things right so far. Uh, you're, you're doing a great job. Oh, thank you. Small Time is actually part of the Whistler Film Festival. Mm-hmm. Is it your first time being in a film? It is, and, you know, I, it's really exciting because I've been doing it. I mean, I haven't been doing it for, a lot of people have been doing it longer, but for me, it's, you know, we changed our whole life. We moved to New York City all cool. because of this, and now, I mean, it's, it's not an Oscar, but it's something. I'm getting recognized for all our hard work. The whole, not like not just me, but like Niav and and everyone who worked on it. So it's it's really amazing to see that people like it, and you know they're they're watching it and they're critiquing it and just it's you know talking about it. It's like making a little buzz. You'll be accepting an Oscar one day. I can see it for sure. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, of course. So what's next for you? Well, I have a. I have a a horror film called Mother coming out, I think, next year. And then there's, you know, I mean, there's little things, um, little movies. And then I do have another feature film that's called Esme. That one's kind of in the mix right now, but in, in like editing and coloring. But besides from that, you know, just a few more episodes of The Flight Attendant. So. I'm not going to ask you too much about the flight attendant because I'm sure I'm sure you can't dive into too much detail without giving anything away. Um, but the fact that you moved to New York, you have siblings. What did they think? Were they were they like the? Were they upset? It's all about you right now. Um, I mean, everyone in my family is really supportive of it. We've got you know everyone's really creative. My older brothers, he already lived in New York, so it wasn't like. We weren't crazy moving away from everybody. We were kind of moving to them, so moving to him. So, and then, you know, my sister's an animator. So everyone's kind of got their own artistic little thing. So we were all like, yeah, go, let's live your dream. Let's do it. So everyone, and everyone was, I mean, it's New York City. Who doesn't yeah. want to be here? You know, it's concrete jungle. It's, you know, so we were kind of, we were all really excited. That's so awesome. It's really, really important to have a supportive family anytime, <laughs> but especially during these times um, yeah. where nobody knows what's going to happen, right? Yeah, and definitely if I didn't want to do it, we would not have done it, you know? So it's definitely like, you know, it's all like, they, they are supportive, but it was like, I was really wanting to, I was like, let's go, let's do it, let's do it, you know? That's great. I mean, I know from being a shy person, Sam, <laughs> it's uh it's not easy to put yourself out there when the world seems so big. But yeah. like I said, it really seems as though you're doing something right. And uh, I can definitely see you winning an Oscar one day. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Audrey, I have one more question that I try to ask each of my guests. It's about your socks. <laughs> I think that socks tell a lot about a person. And I would like to know what type of socks you wear. I, you know, I like, I like, Fuzzy socks, definitely. I think I like I like long socks as well, fuzzy socks and long socks. But I would say I don't know how you feel about this, but I might I might be more of a slipper person, okay. slipper than a sock person. Um, but my fair. are my unicorn slippers. These are my. Oh uh, well, those win. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. as know. long as you're wearing something funky on your feet, yeah. then we're good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for your time, Audrey. I really appreciate it. Oh, All the best with, with the future of the Whistler Film Festival and everything else that you're you're going for. Oh. I can't wait to see the next episode of Flight Attendant. Me too. <laughs> <laughs>